black hoodie, I'm back cooking these goodies. Look at these views from cooking these foods. Yeah. Okay, not really sure why I'm even showing you this part, but a couple of things I do want to mention. It's just a quick, easy dinner tonight. We got the doctor on hand, Dr. Otker or Etker, I don't know. But if you can get your hands on this brand, Casa de Mama, we got a deluxe pie, very nice pie, good pie. I've had them on here before though, I think. But anyways, the real reason is this arugula is turning on me. And uh, in Napoli style, beautiful pizzerias, they make prosciutto and arugula pizzas. Arugula on top of pizza is amazing. So I'm gonna use that on here and make it truly deluxe, season it up a little bit. And also I wanted to mention this. Of course, we're gonna make some chini infused ranch dip, but they just switched. They changed their game up huge. They have square glass containers now and opposed to these round plastic ones. So I wonder what that switch is all about why they went glass and why they went square. Either way, I actually kind of dig it and it looks like it keeps the peppers more fresh. These ones tended to have kind of like white, almost discolored peppers at the top a lot of the time. So maybe that's why the switch. But anyways, let's eat a pizza. I suppose for customer review, I'll just show you the pre-oven oven on the Zaza because who knows, you might want to buy one one day. But that's what she looks like. Here are the little can, kind of canned mushrooms. <laughs> with your little peppers and everything pretty standard but i know that they're good they got this little rising crust on them it's nice all right so the pie is about to fly out the oven. so what we got to do is to make sure that we don't get this too soggy right we don't want to let it sit around and sog out just a touch of oil let's make it more peppery a little sprinkle of salt let's well, not dirty a bowl why would we do that a little tossy toss and we're all set. I'm extremely tempted because of the addition of arugula to do a quadrant cut, but it goes against my very nature of, I need to have it in eight slices. I just don't understand how you eat a pizza in not eight slices. Ah, now I'm in super debate. Maybe I just do, do a quadrant. Ah, I don't know, I don't like quadrants. We'll do an experiment. We'll try two ways, see what works. We just arugula this baby. A salad on your za, a little chini garnish just to finish, and there it is. Five minute throw togethers, and uh, you know, it, it's just cooking a freezer pie. Five minute meals. Just throw it in the oven. <laughs> All right, yo, what up, what's good with y'all? I was gonna just probably not even upload or rock a meal with you today, but I figured whatever, freezer pie, I got this arugula I need to use up, but mainly I was excited to report uh, the tra what transpired, I should say, on the staircase that I talked about yesterday. So I went further into it. Um, some suspicions were came true, but if you don't want to, like if you're watching it off my recommendation and you don't want it spoiled, I'm about to spoil the whole shit for you. So maybe don't watch this, but I'm going to talk about it for those who have maybe seen it or just in general, because some suspicions came true. Okay. Okay. Let's eat this. Pepperoncinis will just kind of off to the side for a moment but we will have a first bite with a chain um i think i'm gonna try one of the quarter slices first or not you know the quadrant the big the big part and uh, i think i'm actually just going to spoon on our chini juice laden ranch because it's going to be hard to dip into the sauce, I, I have a feeling, because it's going to be like this, you know? But there you go. A salad on your saw. Let's, let's do it. It's so hot. But it's so good. Like I said, this brand of pizza, that's a good one for a freezer pizza. They're like four bucks. It's really good bang for your buck. Okay, so. A 
the bottom could use a little more crisp, but the cheese was getting too dark. Okay, if you've never had arugula on your pizza, I highly suggest it. I had never tried it until uh, early 20s when I worked in a, a hip pizzeria. They were slinging uh, like traditional Neapolit Neapolitana style pizzas. Wood fire. And they had a uh, prosciutto and arugula. Which is pretty standard and or common. And I really like the addition of the arugula. However, I'm not a fan of prosciutto. And I forgot to have a bite of peppercini with the first slice. I'm sorry. Prosciutto is the aroma that it gives off kind of freaks me out. It kind of smells like a little bit like somebody peed in the corner. Like when you go to a past a pissy corner and it's got like that really kind of gross pissy aroma. That's kind of what prosciutto is like to me. And the texture of it is too weird. It's like the chew on it is extremely strange. It all depends on the quality of the prosciutto that you're getting. But uh, for the most part, I've had some good ones that are a little less seemingly kind of gross, but uh, most that I've had are not the greatest. So sorry if I'm hating on prosciutto and you love prosciutto, but it's not for me. What else isn't for me is when people like who don't really even know what it is, you would take their order and they say pr pr prosciutto. <laughs> Because it's spelled like you would kind of pronounce a hard C I U T T O, prosquito. No judgment though, if you've never had it, you, like, you wouldn't really know how to say it. Spelling is not everybody's forte, just as math is not mine. I watched Goodwill Hunting the other day. <laughs> and just looking at the equation on the chalkboard, when he's mopping up the hall and he's looking at it and he starts doing shit, that shit fries my brain. I don't, I cannot comprehend that shit. How people have the first idea of what to do with any of that, those formulas. I don't know, but I do know that you're either born with that side of the brain or you're not. And I'm not, I'm a linguist. That's my thing. But you know, my dad's good at math. My uncle's good at math, but those guys can't. I don't know. They can't dance for shit. They can't create music. They don't know how to express themselves really verbally too well. Like often, I guess my dad is dyslexic and can hardly like, like he can spell properly. He knows what words mean, but like his grammar is quite pretty terrible, but it's just, he doesn't have that side of it. His brain doesn't work that way. Right. It's just what you're born with. Like I can write a cohesive piece of spoken word with rhythm to a beat, right? All these things. He wouldn't know where to start. 
you are who you are in this world. Okay, so the staircase. I wrapped it up. However, I will admit I skinned a little bit, just parts that were like kind of boring or disinteresting because it's a long walk and I didn't have the patience for the whole thing, but I learned everything I needed to know. I watched predominantly all of it though. So as I suspected, the jury came back guilty for murder one, first degree. I had a feeling it was gonna go there. Buddy does eight year, year eight years. He's like supposed to basically be in for life or die in there, right? But he gets approved for a retrial due to one of the SBI unit guys um, that was doing blood spatter recreation and that. He just kind of like, he was biased and falsi falsified and sloppily just input data and stuff and kind of made situations so it would just make him seem completely and totally guilty. And the jury said like that's what swayed them was his whole professional um, assessment of the situation. But he also, during the time this guy was in jail, was found <coughs> that he did shit like that in another trial that put a guy away for 17 years that got out as a, like, wrong, like at his retrial for being wrong, wrongly accused. So he was exonerated. Um, so they sparked up this guy's retrial because that same dude from the SBI unit worked on these cases. So anyways, they present retrial present the new findings, the new evidence and stuff. And uh, the uh, he takes a plea of manslaughter. He pleads guilty, even though he's, he's, he says like, he's like, I did not do that. Like he, you know, when he's talking to his lawyer, he's like, unfortunately, obviously you're gonna have to like plead guilty. But he's like, I'm not guilty of this. I still maintain that I did not do this, but to get the plea bargain of manslaughter, um, he did that, so his sentence should have been for a total of whatever months for a maximum on that, uh, on that set, on that verdict, on that ruling. But the time that he already did exceeded the maximum of that ruling. So they, the judge said, okay, that's retroactive, but applies to this time. So that's time served. So you've already served over the max. So he's free now at this point, free to go. And, uh, He's like something like 68, no, he's sad, no, he was 70 or 71 actually when, when he was finally f free and he maintains his innocence. Now, as far as my assessment of the situation, I still have no idea. whether he is guilty or not because 
he doesn't seem guilty. So either he has no feelings, no remorse, and he's a really good liar. He does seem emotionally affected by it and traumatized. But there's parts of me that are like... This guy's shady. And the whole scene where she was found doesn't... I don't know how that's an accident, but... Either way, his children, except for one, with the exception of one, they all stuck by and believe him. One, however, did not. And she took up uh, uh, like attack with, on the side of her aunt. So her aunts were the sisters of, you know, the wife that died. But the fact that the majority of the kids stayed with him, believed him, is like, you kind of got to believe that he's not guilty of it but I don't know perhaps they're brainwashed by his cunning and ability to be just like a multiple faces kind of guy I don't know either way it's technically like unsolved if you really think about it. Like they don't really know what happened there. There's no real confirmation of whether he did or did not do it or if it was an accident. But it was a good watch. And uh, and yeah, I just, I don't know. I don't know whether he did or didn't do it. I, it, it seems like he murked her, to be honest, on my side. But I can't be certain. Anyway, I just wanted to share that today because I never get wrapped up in these murder mysteries, but I was talking about it yesterday. It fully intrigued me. I learned about it, and now I'm telling you. All right, try arugula on your pizza. Um, eat homemade pizzas because they're easy. <laughs> I'm spiced up. I'm sweating. And until the next one, you know what to do. Eat good, live well stay true if you like this content please like comment and subscribe as well as check out my pinned comment down below to find other ways to support this channel thank you for watching eat good live well and stay true